All right, we're Good on. Good evening. Welcome. Assalamu alaikum. This is the Muslim Center of Middlesex County here in Piscataway. We're one of the oldest and I would say largest mosques in Central Jersey, back from 1986 all the way up to here. So that's, forget my math, but 27 years. I have, a, I have an engineering and a master's degree, so I know my math. But right, so that's 20, 37 years. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it might not be the cleanest part there, but you now this place, the mosque and the school building, all the way going down. As you can see we have a big parking lot with over 200 parking spaces as well. Uh, we always get full. You'll see as the evening comes about, uh, you might have trouble getting out because there are so many cars here. So we just finished a prayer service. It was at six o'clock. That's why you see people, a lot of people leaving. Uh, the next prayer service is going to be 736 or 737. That's the sunset prayer. So as you know, it's Ramadan. Ramadan is when you know, we're fasting throughout the day and now that it's, uh, we break the fast at sunset. So that's when everyone gets together. We have a prayer service around sunset. That's the Maghrib prayer. Then we'll have a big dinner. So you guys are going to be in for a treat tonight. That's right. All right. So if you want to can jump right in. Uh, no, I think a people will take care of it. All right, so this is our main lobby. Just take the lights. All right. So this is our main lobby. On the le on my right is the actual mosque area where we go for prayer. On my left is our school building slash multi-purpose uh, facilities as well. How do I get the big light? Okay, that's all. <laughs> all right. Okay. So you see, we have two entrances. One is on the right. That's for the brother's side. The men go through there. The left is for the sisters. The sisters go through there. So we have separate prayer spaces. We both go upstairs, but you know, the separate partition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. between the two. Um, any questions you have on the calligraphy or anything? I was, was going to say, this? is there yeah. any like meaning behind some yeah. of the decorations we see here? Some of the so decorations are going to be the decorations. It's not a religious meaning; it's more of a cultural thing. You see the arches and stuff; those come back from the Persian slash Ottoman uh, area. Even if you look at maybe the Mughal period in India uh, or the Ottomans, most of them had many arches. So that's why you'll see arches have become a traditional part of how maybe in a way Islamic architecture is. So that's just the decorations are more of a cultural significance. But if you have any questions on any words that you see around you, like for example, you'll see in the blue tiles at the back or at the front, mm, right? Yeah. Those are actually the names of God. So, oh, yeah. I mean, there are 99 names, known names of God. And, you know, we just made tiles out of them and you'll see more of these even inside the mosque as well. Are those also names of God? Right? Yeah, so that's a good question. So that is an actually a short prayer that we say whenever we enter the mosque. So it just trans, it's in Arabic, it's Allahumma fahli ya rahmatik. In English, it means, oh, my Lord, open the doors of mercy for us. Mm. So literally, as you're walking through the doors of the mosque entering, mm -hmm. if you're asking God to open the doors of mercy for you. So that's a short prayer that we say. Uh, we have a prayer for almost everything uh, well, before we eat, after we eat, before we go to sleep, after we wake up. So entering the masjid, even leaving the masjid has a, leaving the mosque has a short prayer as well. Mm. Um, in the meantime, we can look at the school area here. It's a school building, but it's also, it's a multi-purpose sort of area. Is this fairly common for like mosques no, no. or place of Islamic worship uh, to have a school? No, no, no. Because okay. schools are obviously much harder to ma start, start, maintain, grow. Uh, we have like close to just under 500 students here mm -hmm. uh, full time. And we're right now they're on break because it's last few days of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you would see a lot of activity <laughs> in and out. Even we have evening schools as well. So you'll see a lot of kids in and out throughout the day and evening. Uh, but no, typically, because mosques are, you'll see the mosque is a bit, is a lot smaller. Uh, schools obviously need a lot more space. Yeah. Uh, like I said, if I find where it's then it's a much bigger facility here. Mm -hmm. uh, mosques, you don't necessarily need too many things, right? So that's why it's easier to have a mosque, maintain it. Schools are a lot harder, but schools are the need now because, you know, we have much, I mean, we have a wait list of 200 plus students. So yeah, we can't keep up. Uh, and this the, is um, K through 12 or? Pre, preschool through 12. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times we say, <laughs> if you're in Piscataway, you go to school here, all the way to 12, you go to Rutgers. 
uh, for your undergrad or grad, yeah. you're well set. So, I mean, obviously you'd probably have your um, core classes that like, you know, math and all that stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm also assuming kind of like um, at Christian private school, you would have like Sunday school classes or whatever. Right. Right. Is there something similar or equivalent? So there are a few classes that are a bit oriented on the religious aspect of it. Yeah. But yeah, most of it is on the regular school curriculum, okay. like any other place. Uh, and then we also have a separate track if kids want to memorize the Holy Quran. It's a, mm. it's a big uh, honor. If you, because the Holy Quran, as you know, is uh, it's a it's a holy book, yeah, revealed by God mm -hmm. Almighty, mm -hmm. and it's a big honor if you actually memorize the whole book cover to cover in Arabic specifically. In Arabic, yes, yeah. it's only yeah, I can only remember in Arabic, <laughs> um, but it, it is in Arabic. And so far from this school, we had well over 150 kids memorize the Quran and and graduate. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So that's a pretty popular thing that kids parents want to get their kids into. It's it's not for everyone because it's a lot of hard, it's a lot of passion it takes a lot of dedication mm -hmm. and you know time but we still had a lot of students do it uh, so that's a separate track also in the school okay that goes along with you know your regular uh studies as well mm -hmm. yeah, like i said most of our kids many of our kids go to Rutgers for undergrad some go to princeton and uh, other princeton as well yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so man trying to keep up the keep up the uh, talent here that's, that's good, cool. that's yeah, good. academic achievement here is um when I've read about it, you know, it's above the public schools. Even though we may not have the resources, but you know, we, we're doing our best with what we have, mm -hmm. uh, you yeah. know, whether it's faculty and so on. So uh, you'll see uh, everything around you is Ramadan theme. Like we say, it's Ramadan, Barak, <laughs> and even these arts that kids did are, are focused on Ramadan. Um, uh, that's just the time of the year that you're here. Uh, regular days also will have different themes of the month, so you'll have some art pieces and or, how do you say that full phrase the ramadan Mu ramadan mubarak. mubarak so mubarak is more of a blessed, blessed yes okay exactly yeah yeah and yeah, i've been so. seeing those in my comment section recently and i've been trying right. to figure out what they mean all right, all right. <laughs> yeah. so it's like yeah. have a blessed ramadan okay right. okay yeah all so right. the word barak is uh means blessing in arabic mm -hmm. so you you'll say ramadan mubarak when eid comes out you'll hear them say eid mubarak as well. uh, okay so, yeah that's that's basically what it is Mubarak essentially means you have a blessed, uh, blessed event or blessed gathering. Okay. Well, so that's the school. That's the mission. Um, I don't know if you want to take things of the classrooms. I guess not, right? You I mean, we don't need to look through all the classrooms. classrooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not, nothing special there. The regular classrooms. So we can let's go another one. We'll have to head upstairs to the main prayer area. Okay. okay. The Imam may be heading down. You can meet him as well. Awesome. As he gets down, yeah. And how many people attend the mosque itself? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> a, a, a thousand a day. Uh, typically, if you see upstairs, space-wise, we have like 250, and then first floor, we have a few more. But what happens is we do multiple sessions then, so that way we get more people. I'll take you down to as well. That's our overflow area. Mm. We'll see more people. Oh, oh, right. so. So the Imam of Ramadan, Imam Rao. So he uh, does uh, work on comparative religion. Okay. So this is his first visit to a mosque. He's been to churches and synagogues. And I have places. been at a lot of different places at this point. I haven't been at a synagogue yet. I do want to go no, there. Okay. But I've been at multiple different types of churches and denominations. Got it. Uh, first time at a mosque. Okay. Very, very glad <laughs> to be here. Okay. Um, we visited um, a Mormon temple out in um, mm -hmm. DC one time. Right. Um, and I visited Eastern Orthodox, very like traditional, like more Orthodox church. Um, but yeah, first time at a mosque, so this okay. is fun. All right. Okay. So uh, I, I said, yeah, uh, uh, I hope you uh, get an under the understanding that you need to have, right? Uh, 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 did you go upstairs? Did you see the. Yeah, the I'm prayer? just taking him upstairs. Oh, okay. Now. <laughs> you're going yeah. here, right? Uh, well, that's your main place. Uh, yeah. the, the main part of the, of the box, all of the rest is just you know to assist in the uh, right. uh, in the prayer, it's yes, <laughs> the yes. establishment of the prayer. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, when you go upstairs, um, uh, um, feel free to ask any questions. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'd rather be able to answer uh, most of the questions there, right? Okay. Uh, you look around you, you see things, so whatever comes to mind, you ask about it. Okay. okay. Thank you. This is a very. Yeah, uh, if I, I can answer anything, I'll bring him back. Yeah, yeah, sure. To you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I very we'll much. Yeah. Come now, uh, will you? Yeah, we can. <laughs> we can go okay.
first floor area. So you have restrooms on the right side mm -hmm. for the brothers. Uh, yeah. uh, not just restrooms. Uh, mm -hmm. These are places where we make ablution. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, washing and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so usually, you know, people are coming here uh, from work uh, and they may need to use the restroom. But they, in addition to that, they will need to do the ablution, mm -hmm. uh, washing their hands and the face and the feet and so on. Uh, so this is uh, as an uh, this is an important, in fact, a compulsory part of the prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, our condition for the prayer, uh, we have to we ha we have to do that. Um, the other thing I want to mention, though, is that while in most mosques today you see people uh, taking off their shoes, uh, their their um, uh, so in, in the mosque uh, the prayer area, uh, there there are no shoes. We're not praying because they because they are carpets. Uh, but uh, if you're out in the open, if you're praying in the open, say, uh, you know, not in a not in a building or in another building that's not a mosque, uh, you don't have to take off your shoes. Mm. Right? Uh, we only do it here just to keep the place, you know, clean and tidy and so on. Right? Keep the carpet. We, got, we now everybody's putting their heads on uh, on the ground, mm -hmm. uh, so they uh, need to have a, a clean place to do that. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, outside uh, on the earth, we pray on on the ground itself, the bare ground, you know, gravel or whatever is there. We can we, we can pray there, but we, and we have to put our heads there. As long as the place is you know clean enough, uh, clean, uh, then, then we pray there. Mm -hmm. uh, as long yeah, and basically, what it means is um uh, that there is uh, no th nothing such as like maybe a dog came there and urinated or there is some feces mm -hmm. uh, and so on. Uh, once those are removed, then the place is clean. Mm -hmm. actually, I have a mm -hmm. funny story actually yeah. to go along with that. I know um, a masjid uh, in North Jersey mm -hmm. that wanted to, re like, because the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, used to um, pray with his shoes on. So they wanted to revive, um, they wanted to revive that practice. So they had people praying on the carpet with the shoes on. Well, within a short, I'm thinking within a year, I don't know the exact frame of time, you know, might have been less, a little more. They actually had to remove the replace carpet, it. replace the carpet. And they <laughs> said, OK, no more shoes in our masjid, you know, because it's a, it's a practical thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, the prophet prayed uh, usually with the shoes on. And that is because uh, the, the ground of the marsh was, was actually the earth itself. Right. Oh, uh, OK. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, you know, the most simple structure, uh, and the ground was the, uh, was just the, the sand. And, <laughs> and what's and so does the purpose of the prayer rug that a lot of people use is that part of the fact of like keeping a clean surface? Yeah, yes, that's right. It's to keep it so you can spread that anywhere. But whatever is underneath, you don't bother with that. But you're mm -hmm. praying on clean, on clean ground. And then uh, I was under the impression that some believe that you need. Uh, I forget exactly like kissing something when they go down or is that a certain sector i'm not sure if what i'm thinking of the uh, Shia, so. uh, yeah the, the shia they uh, probably don't they don't usually kiss it but they have um the, mm, so, okay, uh, so okay. uh, it is uh, it is more like um uh what is it perhaps a clay dry clay or something like that right uh, uh and if they can get it from karbala <laughs> they, <laughs> they would have, have it from Kar you know uh, karbala is a place where there's a certain Major incidents occurred in history, and uh, the, you know, so the Shia re re revere uh, that place, right? They mm -hmm. go there even for pe pilgrimage and so on. Uh, so they might bring away some of the earth, you know, these um, uh, stone tablets uh, or clay tablets and so on, right? Small, mm. uh, and they would use that. Uh, they, uh, they would put their forage on that when they are going down. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense now. So, um, as most people who go here, do they uh, prescribe to a certain sector, or uh, is it kind of diverse? Uh, well, uh, it is the majority sect, if you want to say sect. Uh, uh, the Sunni, the Sunnis, uh, Sunnis uh, versus the Shia. Yeah. Basically, in Islam, you have just the two branches, right? The Shia and the Sunnis, and the Shia, uh, maybe about ten percent of the entire Muslim world okay. population. And uh, the, the, the Sunnis are the vast majority. Uh, so this is, you can say, the more orthodox uh, form of Islam, mm -hmm. the more orthodox understanding of the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet and yeah. so on, right? Uh, this is what we follow here. Uh, but uh, the mosque is, uh, uh, and most uh, mosques uh, throughout the, this country, are open to anyone. Okay. 
So if a person, uh, the time for prayer comes, uh, and he has to pray, he will go into any mosque uh, that is nearby. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think Shia do that very often. Shia, Shia come here too, right? Yeah. And if uh, we are around their mosque, and so we would pray in it. So mm -hmm. it's not that you know we mutually yeah, exclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, right? mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's proceed. Mm -hmm. This is the TV overflow area. So if the top floor gets full, then mm. we roll out these carpets. Uh, ah, okay. And then okay, okay. Okay. So are a lot of mosques like this, where they're like they're like almost like community centers where people can come together and I don't know, enjoy uh, meals, yeah. recreation, things like that. Uh, that's right. That's what we have here, and uh, I think most mosques. Uh, you know, tend towards that uh, in, in this country. So we, we need a place to congregate and to have mm -hmm. different activities. And yeah. so on. Okay, so this is the prayer area. Um, this is for brothers. And behind there uh, is for sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we also have, uh, because it is the last uh, days of, Ro of Ramadan, uh, those who are staying in the mosque uh, full time until the end of Ramadan for the last 10 days. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have uh, some like almost like tents uh, set up for them. Uh, they are here. Brothers. Uh, who, uh, What's that timer over there? Oh, okay, uh, l let me explain a few things uh, <laughs> and then you can ask questions after <laughs> that. Right? Uh, so before we come to that, um, uh, you will say, well, there, you, there are hardly any chairs. Mm -hmm. There are chairs for people who need it, uh, especially like elders and so on who may need to sit while pray, praying, but usually the prayers are standing. Mm -hmm. uh, we stand and we bow prostrate and so on. Uh, uh, this uh, niche in the wall here shows the direction uh, towards uh, Mecca uh, that we have to feel, all of us have to face mm -hmm. that direction. Mm -hmm. So even the Imam, when he's leading the prayer, he is facing that direction. He doesn't face the audience or the people. Mm -hmm. right? all, all are facing in that direction. And all are basically doing the same actions. Uh, uh, um, the Imam will be reciting from the Quran. The people are listening to him. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he goes uh, uh, into uh, uh, genuf genuflection. Right? Uh, and the others uh, do that uh, after him and they get up and then they prostrate and so on, right? So they're following the Imam, but everybody is doing the same actions as the Imam himself, mm -hmm. right? So, the, mm -hmm. so if you're they're here, if you're here yeah. until the time it's... Um, yeah. They're gonna make this call with us too. Yeah. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. okay good. And so does the Imam step up on the steps there? Uh, for a sermon, now that, mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, only in the case of a sermon. Uh, and that is on Fridays. Uh, the midday prayer uh, has a sermon attached. So all of the other prayers do, do not. Uh, there, there is no sermon. Mm -hmm. uh, we are just praying to to God. Right? But uh, at the time of a sermon, he will stand on that, look at uh, this way to the audience, and, uh, and speak. Mm -hmm. Is there um, purpose behind the stars and the, the design we see up here on the ceiling? No, there's no religious significance. Okay. Uh, it's just a design that uh, uh, the original builders of the of this mosque <laughs> and they thought, had that design. Okay. And you go into another mosque, you will see other designs, uh, mainly you know geometric uh, designs. Um, uh, and then, uh, so uh, what what else do we have here? Um, the the times. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, what we have there? Well. You see the top one is uh, the, the time uh, as it is now. And then below that, uh, below that you have the five uh, daily periods go closer. So there's a very regular time. Mm -hmm. The second one where you have two dashes and you don't have a, a numbers, uh, that will indicate um, when, the, when the time for any prayer is closed, it will give you the, the countdown, okay. how many minutes remain, and there will be a countdown. Uh, the uh, prayer for the morning, uh, before dawn, uh, or at the time of dawn, mm. five fifteen, uh, and then the midday prayer one fifteen, uh, the afternoon prayer, uh, which uh, we recently we just concluded a few minutes ago, and that is, so right now it's six o'clock, mm -hmm. uh, and some of these times will change based on the time of the year, 
Mm-hmm. Because in, in winter, the days are shorter, the mm-hmm. nights are longer, and so on. So there will be a difference in time. Okay. Uh, uh, then sunset prayer, uh, 7, 4, or 5, uh, that, that's uh, around sun- sunset time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the late night night prayer, 9.15, that is after all of the twilight and so on has gone away. Okay. It's absolutely dark, 9.15. Uh, and, uh, and again, it's uh, the time, uh, this time of the year, but it, it, it will change. In fact, yep. it will get mm-hmm. later. Yep. It will get later uh, as we go into summer. Uh, and then you have uh, below that uh, you have the Friday prayer 115 uh, because it is a, it is at midday time it is the same as the midday one which is 115 right yeah uh, well there are other things you can see the the time the, the day also giving you the uh, exact time for for each prayer and so on mm. uh, and these are uh, this is telling you when uh, uh, 737. Uh, will be the time when we break fast. Mm. Uh, this will be the time uh, just uh, at, uh, after sunset. It's always a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing books over here. Are they all Qurans or are they yeah. different books? No, the, uh, the, uh, most of them. Uh, most of them are. Uh, some of them are uh, the Quran with the translation, or Quran with explanations, and so mm-hmm. on. So uh, like commentaries. Uh, yes, uh, okay. uh, commentaries. Uh, and there sometimes, uh, I think we have a few other books, uh, such as a Hadith, uh, you know, mm-hmm. you, you know mm-hmm. what is Hadith? Yep. Uh, okay. mm-hmm. uh, other religious texts and so on, um, uh, thick uh, jurisprudence, okay. so <laughs> we have books. And then you said somehow also the English translation and stuff in them too. Yeah, some of them have yeah, English. More of the ones with the English translation are on that side. For example, one with the English. Oh, okay. Okay. One over here. Yeah. Because I have, so at my house, I have two Qurans, and one is purely in the English, and the other one has the Arabic and then the English next to it. Which um, do you have? I honestly can't tell you off the top of my head. <laughs> but um, I, I have two different translations, I know that much. Um, and I've read the one all the way through in the English translation. I don't speak Arabic, so. But um, I have read the one all the way through in the English translation. Um, but I got, I did end up getting a second one at one point that had the Arabic in it as well that I thought was pretty cool to have. Come on, guys, um, mm-hmm. you're learning all these religions, you also got to learn all the languages. Have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, I, I mean, right now I'm studying Hinduism as well a little bit, so like yeah. I would need to learn Hindi and uh, <laughs> yeah. Hebrew, and Sanskrit, Sanskrit. <laughs> <laughs> Greek. Oh man, yeah. Okay. It really depends on uh, what you want to go into more deeply. Uh, you, <laughs> you would need to learn the language. Mm-hmm. You know. And, um, because a lot of yeah. the a lot of the prayers, especially, are said in Arabic, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all of these, you know, the kind of, this kind of formal prayers are in Arabic. Uh, mm-hmm. It's uh, not allowed to do it in any other language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, if you by prayer you mean you know a general prayer, you supplicate uh, to a God and so mm-hmm. on, you do that in your own language. That is okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I am, I think the one thing that kind of, like, in my mind, since I never visited a mosque before, I'm, I was trying to envision um, how, you know, people would behave within a sacred place like this, I would assume, because, like, in certain, certain religious sects, like, you're not even allowed to be in the holy place unless you're part of that religion, if that makes, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and yeah, then there's some is. religions that are, like, oh. it's very open. So, like, I was just really mm-hmm. curious how this would look. Yeah, I know um, uh, people uh, at first they think uh, of Islam like that also, that we don't allow people inside of the mosque, but that is not so. Um, mm-hmm. uh, there are always visitors uh, at the mosque here and maybe most other places and most other mosques. Mm-hmm. And you can see that when tourists go to the Middle East, they go to mosques also, right? Uh, they are given tours of the, of the mosque. <laughs> I, I've been, um, I would love to travel. I would love to travel if I had the ability to, yep. Uh, just one other thing to point out. Um, uh, that uh, in the, within the frame there, mm-hmm. uh, that's one verse of the Quran, uh, but uh, in calligraphy uh, style, you know, the, the way it, uh, which is, uh, it is written. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, so you know, you have different styles of writing in Arabic, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so whenever they write the Quran, uh, they like to beautify it, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> the most calligraphic, calligraphic style and so on, right? Mm-hmm. So that, that's here. It's just one part of the Quran. Yeah, that 
um, which verse is it? It's chapter two, verse two fifty five. It's called I of course or the verse of the footstool. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, what's the summary of that verse? Oh, some, or uh, what's some, the English? Yeah, some people have translated it uh, as um, the, 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 the verse of the, of the throne, right? Uh, where it speaks about God, it speaks of who He is, um, uh, that He has no partner. Mm -hmm. uh, it speaks about His knowledge being comprehensive. He knows everything, every minute detail of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 he doesn't and, uh, get tired, He doesn't sleep. Right. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yes. He doesn't get. He doesn't yeah. see. Uh, his. Uh, uh, his. Uh, what you mentioned, the footstool. The, the yeah. name of the verse itself. The, the the word that comes in it. Uh, his footstool extends over the heavens and the earth. Mm. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you said you're an imam, right? Uh -huh. What's your role as an imam within the mosque? What what um, sort of practices do you do? What sort of things do you lead? All that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. The prayers, uh, I, I will lead the prayers, but the prayers, uh, anybody else can lead also. If I'm not around, if the Imam is not around, anybody else can, can lead mm -hmm. the prayer. Right? Uh, as long as, uh, you know, of course, they know how to do it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> they, must, they must have some knowledge. Uh, somebody might make a mistake. They have to know how to correct themselves you know, yeah. and so on, right? So things, th things like that. They have to have some, some basic knowledge of uh, what they are doing. Uh, but anybody basically can, can can lead the prayer. So if the imam is not around, they will appoint somebody from among them to, to, to lead the prayer. Mm -hmm. So that's one uh, main thing. Um, um, beside that, other functions uh, which you may say, like the social functions, uh, you know, conducting marriages uh, and mm -hmm. so on, uh, giving advice and answering questions uh, from the community, mm -hmm. giving advice. Uh, you know, sometimes there are special occasions and so on, and we, you know, uh, again, you know, these are while these uh, are functions of the imam, uh, they're not, they not exclusive to him. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So anybody else with the knowledge can do that, right? Mm -hmm. A special occasion comes around. You know, uh, so a anybody who has the knowledge can explain it to the people and tell them what they have to do, and you know wh whether they are special prayers or, uh, and so on. Anybody can do that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but these are th things that I will usually do. And then the um, uh, the marriages uh, conducting the marriages and so on. And if they have, if there are problems within marriage, you know, counseling and mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and so on. Right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I've also noticed there's um, uh, a general attire that people are wearing. Is there any sort of meaning behind the attire? I know modesty is uh -huh. normally a big part of it, but... Yeah. Uh, the reason for this kind of attire is uh, we're trying to follow in the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the kind of clothing that he wore... Uh, um, would be like this, not uh, not uh, exactly, not exactly necessarily, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but something similar, something very close to this, uh, uh, and then there will be like uh, the pants maybe underneath, right? Mm -hmm. and the, um, soft, the soft cloth, right? Mm -hmm. uh, pants, not the thick one. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, just trying to follow in his footsteps. He would keep his head covered, and that's why we, mm. we cover our, our head. And is there uh, the prophet? Uh, the prophet did this. Obviously, it's important in that regard. Is there any other um, meaning behind the head being covered? Um, I know from a tradition I come from, um, there's a passage in the Bible that talks about women wearing a head covering because of the blessings of the angels and so forth. I didn't know if there's anything like that in the Quran about head being covered or anything of any sort of spiritual significance or? Uh, the spiritual significance uh, is that we are trying to imitate the Prophet okay. himself, okay. doing what he did. That right? in of itself is the uh, spiritual yeah, benefit? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That connection with him, trying to develop that connection with him uh, and doing things in the way that he did them. Uh, uh, and. Uh, you know, developing the kind of character that he had, mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, you know, um, uh, the character that human beings should have. <laughs> yep. Uh, honesty, truthfulness, and, you know, uh, things like a kind, uh, kindness and, uh, and so on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we try to imitate him uh, in terms of his character, uh, in terms of his physical appearance. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, and then there are things that he did that um, are compulsory for us to follow. 
Yeah. Uh, such as the prayer, the way that he prayed, we are supposed to pray like him, exactly like him. And that would go back yeah. to a lot of the five principles of like Islam and the six articles of faith and things like that, yeah, where yes. the compulsory things are yeah. coming in. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, okay. way he, the way he made Hajj, the pilgrimage, and, mm -hmm. and so on. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Uh, I won't go with you the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What, what's your name again? Raul. Raul. All right. Thank you. Actually, he's one of the young Damong Imams in the area. Like, you go to any other mosque, you say, MCMC, they'll say, oh, can they my salam to Imam Raul? They're lucky to have him. Okay, awesome. Thank you. I'm very grateful. Oh, zakat and fitra. Those are um, has to do with giving. Uh, yeah. Right, right. So zakat is one of the pillars of the faith. So mm -hmm. you have to give out two and a half percent of your annual savings. Yep. Uh, in charity, that's that's an obligation on mm -hmm. a Muslim. Fitra is very specific to Ramadan. This is where, as you know, as a, as Ramadan ends, that's when Eid is the festival, right? Yep. And that's also a time where you know a lot of us. Who can they you know, buy new clothes, you know, that's kind of celebration and so on. Fitra is where we give out money to those folks who probably cannot buy any clothes or toys and stuff like those that. Those in poverty. Yeah, stuff. those in yeah. poverty, yeah. So each everyone uh, depending on where you are, there's a prescribed amount that each person has to pay. Mm -hmm. I mean it's a very minimal based on, you know, inflation slash whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's and there's um, mathematical formulas that go into it. So there's a few different ones. Mm -hmm. So that's why one mosque you'll see, yeah. the majority will say $12, $12 for every person in your household. Right. Yeah. Now that's, but there are some mosques that um, I've used an equation at least of 15 and some that use 10. But I haven't seen any like, I've seen 10 to 15 range right, yeah. with the majority landing at $12 per person in your household. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's not nothing erratic. It's all within certain <laughs> plus or minus yeah. standard deviations, if you want to call it. <laughs> because back in the day, um, it was was you know, people weren't giving money. They were given like wheat, yeah. dates, mm -hmm. raisins, mm -hmm. and it was measured. So the formulas are kind of modern constructions to assess, you know, the percentages that you know would have matched that. Mm -hmm. Have you seen a ablution area? I haven't seen inside. Um, you can, uh, you can just, uh, you can just take a picture of the ablution area if you want. Basically, what say ablution is where we, you know, I don't know if you know the whole process. We wash our hands, yep. into the mouth, mm -hmm. face. All of a sudden, we wash our feet. So that's why most places, mosques will have an area like this where you sit, obviously without your shoes and socks, and mm -hmm. that's how you. And that sign is a good reminder. Yeah. Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, um, only used a certain amount of water and advised not to use too much water yeah. while mm -hmm. doing it. So this is actually giving a visual for people because a lot of times people like turn it up. Yeah. Size Especially it here <laughs> in the US. <laughs> yeah, as high as it can go and you know. Yeah. I like the meme we got going on there. Meanwhile, in the whoosh. Yeah. <laughs> meanwhile, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even catch that. I mean, I didn't catch the picture. Oh, uh, I really brought it up. <laughs> so we can wear our shoes back on. All righty. So I would have loved to show the cafeteria, but that's where the sisters are getting prepared for the actual dinner. Yeah. You guys um, are going up. You're going to the top. Yeah, two. Press two. And you know, then now brothers are going to have it downstairs in the gym. So, you know, we're all. <laughs> yeah. This is actually Brother Lincoln. Uh, he's the main man when it comes to organizing the food events. All right. Like 400 plus people, 500 plus people. My new favorite guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll hook you up. <laughs> Just, you know, extra, extra, extra meat. <laughs> Ah, uh, can you smell it? I do smell it. it smells good. <laughs> it smells You're good. Fasting. Fasting, I, right? I've been fasting, so I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on.
I've, I've, I've never been in here until this arm done. Really? No. I've oh, never yeah. been in here. So, oh, yeah, so we'll, this is actually our school gym slash multi purpose. Uh, you can just walk through. Oh, sorry, my bad. Yeah. So, yeah, usually, as I said, it's when I say multi purpose, we do everything here. We, we pray here, we play here, we have dinner, uh, get togethers, and so on. Uh, it wasn't for, you didn't make it for Interfaith Iftar, right? The one where we had no. the, mm -hmm. okay, the dinner for the wider community. Yeah. So, so we, once a year, we, they have an Iftar where the the mosque comes the neighboring churches come the synagogues come it's just anyone anyone in general who wants yeah. to know about ramadan Hindu, and Sikhs. Mm -hmm. break the fast with us know more about uh let me show you up yeah. the picture it's like a united nations of religions in here <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I believe it you're also relatively near a pretty urban area aren't like this place, it's pretty. Yeah, New Brunswick is the so closest. This was. It's very close, actually. The place. Wow. The dead. We had like 350 people. So we usually have, in the formal sitting, we have, you know, table, dining tables and chairs. Uh, and, you know, the mayor, the congressman, everyone was there. In general, people were from across all walks of life just wanted to learn about Ramadan. Many had never been to a mosque before, like you. And it was a good opportunity for them to come see the mosque. And break the fast with us. So yeah. I'm glad you're going to be doing the same today. <laughs> this is our second version of it. Yes. Yeah, you probably have. I don't think you'll have more people than last time, but you know, uh, we'll still have a good crowd here. Okay. So uh, these are just masks. We're just rolling them up. So we, like I said, when the prayer spaces above get full uh, on on the mosque that we just saw, right? We're talking about at least three, or close to 400 plus. Mm -hmm. Once that gets full, then we roll out the mats here mm. and we go up. Especially for Eid, we go all the way to the back and we're still full. Uh, so Eid is like the end of the month. Even that day, we have four different prayers just to keep up with the crowds. So we have at least 3,000 plus people across on the whole day coming in and out. Wow. So we're just getting set up for dinner here. Um, you know, we'll have two serving stations. Let's, let's talk to the Sham. Salam alaikum, Sham. How are you? How are you? These are our friends, oh, okay. Dylan and Hello. Dave. Hello, Dylan. Uh, Dave. Just, 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 oh, come on. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, so Sham is one of our, you know, hardworking volunteers, always here, yeah. helping out. Oh, What's on the menu today? Today we have uh, peri peri chicken. Okay. Uh, peri peri chicken. We have corn salad oh. and rice. Oh wow! If you know peri peri chicken, it's uh, it's a very Spicy. Not spi that not spicy, spicy yeah. but it's. I was gonna say, you better not make very, my stomach like well, in pain. Or, but you have, if, you're, if you're into spice, we do have the extra spice on the side. So uh -huh. I, I yeah. assure you, I will be fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So welcome. Awesome. This is gonna be great. I am. I am excited. So one of the things I wanted to um, answer yeah, your question before, because you had asked about like the translation of Ayatul Kursi. Yeah. So, you know, it would be, you know, uh, God, there is no God, but he, the ever living, the self subsisting supporter of all, mm -hmm. he does not get tired, nor does he sleep. Um, you know, and uh, he, uh, he knows everything in the heavens and, and the earth, earth mm -hmm. and nothing can intercede, you know, except um, with his will. You know, and then he is the um, ever powerful, all knowing. And it's funny, I could have did this verbatim until I said, let me do it. And then uh, all of a sudden, it went, like much of it went out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like me on exam day. <laughs> but, but yeah, he's, uh, in a short nutshell, it's like he you know, shows the greatness of God. Yeah. That he he's the all knowing, uh, ever living sustainer, nourisher, never gets tired. Uh, the equal to him is, is none. Mm -hmm. And the uh, no, I'm getting see 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 with him. Yeah, no, okay. I have to see you some more. I'm just reciting the words that I <laughs> see our Yeah. So, and the part about the kursi, the throne that is thrown extends across the, the seven, across the skies and the heavens. That's basically why it's called Aitul Kursi or the th mm -hmm. uh, what's the throne. But it's a very uh, it's a very commonly decided verse among Muslims in general. Just okay. to remind ourselves. And also, once you decided, you feel like, yes, I'm, you know, I have someone looking after me. So it's, uh, 
I mean, when we were scared or when we were, you know, nervous, like just before you took my interview, I decided it. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's, I guess he didn't do it. That's why he forgot. <laughs> You're right. I didn't do it. <laughs> so, yeah, he, it's recited for protection and stuff like that. But I have went on certain, um, like when I went on certain YouTube channels, I did recite it before going on those channels. Yeah. yeah. There's actually another verse in the Quran, which you often said before going on. It's something that Prophet Moses had uh, decided before he was going to the Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. I can show it Taha. It's just before somebody was singing me one some of the So he decided, "Oh my Lord, make my speech easy for me." And you know, it's uh, so yeah. Actually, we are prepared for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, Alhamdulillah. Uh, if you look, do look around again, you will see Ramadan Mubarak and Ramadan Kareem and stuff. Yep. But again, this serves as a multi-purpose hall. We have the partition screen, so yeah. when we have, you know, because on one side, sisters on the other. Uh, we actually have a stage that comes up here uh, for events, and you know, we can also do basketball tournaments if you guys are into it. This is actually, a, you know, I, actually every inch of the building is 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 very commonly used. Like you have a foot traffic almost everywhere. Okay. But since this is the gym, you can imagine. Uh, a, a few more extra shoes here. Yep. But we yep. cater to all sports here. So you have basketball. We have, you know, goes on. We have basketball clinics for kids. Uh, soccer also in Blue Runner we do play here. Um, and then volleyball is a big one. Badminton is a big one. They've been playing up until the 1 a.m. You have to be like, hey, get out of here. Uh, and badminton. they're still playing. Yeah, badminton. Oh, we, ha- we have portable nets that we set up. We have three courts. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they're on the clock. So, Dustin, remember yeah, playing yeah, Batman growing up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that'd be a new thing. You try shooting a few hoops if you, uh, you want to throw down a few hoops? Uh, uh, not, right now, not right now, but okay. uh, maybe later. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or your next visit. My next visit. I'll, yeah. come, I'll come here specifically just to challenge you on basketball. Oh, uh, yeah. You're, really gonna... <laughs> You're definitely going to win that. But uh, <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, we have something for everyone okay. um, across the day, across the night. We actually... You might need another one of these just because we can't keep up with uh, people asking for more space. <laughs> we have a separate time for sisters to come in and do their stuff, whether it's or their yeah. sports or their exercises and fitness and mm-hmm. stuff. So, um, yeah, that's about the team. I think, you know, like I said, upstairs is the classrooms. Um, next is the Ganazar room. Ganazar room? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've never been there. So. Never been there? Okay. No. So, Ahmed, um, yeah. is it that, like, What's your role here exactly? Just a volunteer. Just a volunteer? Okay. I didn't know if you had any other sort so of... I take care of a few things. Uh, but with a few things, what I'm passionate about is the, the part where welcoming folks of other faiths in. Okay. And basically, the outreach. I lead the outreach committee here. Mm-hmm. So that's why a lot, I mean, a lot of interfaith work, a lot of community service work that we're doing, I'm leading that. I do it's in civic engagement. Basically, you know, and the liaison between the mosque and every the outside world in a way if you wish <laughs> but we do a lot of community service things as well uh we have a food pantry that runs every week uh wednesdays uh we have 100 plus families uh registered with us who come in to pick up food we have a feed the homeless program that runs every single day we actually go out on the streets of new Brunswick. i'll send you a clip of it where we actually hand out hot meals to the homeless almost every day. Mm. So uh, there's that obviously in pandemic, we had many programs uh, to help out those in need. How was that over the pandemic with like COVID restrictions and stuff? So yeah, that's where, uh, cause yeah, obviously the mosque was shut down during those peak, yeah. peak three months. I think all places of worship. Uh, Churches were shut yeah. down. The only thing that was happening was the Imam would just come maybe with one or two other folks who were the admins or caretakers of the mosque and they would just do prayer service but no it was there was no prayer service mm-hmm. for regular so then people would just pray at home pray at their homes uh, and 2020 was really 2020 march is when it really uh, started up right if you remember that's when all the yeah, 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 yeah. lockdowns happened and 2020 may was was when we had ramadan that year yeah. so that was a very quiet ramadan mm-hmm. i mean it's like because ramadan for us is where you know we all come here it's yeah. like mm-hmm. a big full large family from different it's very countries. much of a community thing yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah, yeah 2020 was like 2021 was a little easier in the sense that there were restrictions we had six feet distancing 
So at that point, we had marked, like, if you go upstairs, you'll see fair areas where you all stand sh shoulder to shoulder. At that time, we had placed marks six feet apart. So you would all stand six feet apart okay. and do your prayer services. So a lot of things were restricted, not many gatherings and so on. Mm -hmm. But then 2022, we had opened up a little bit better. Now 2023 is like almost back to pre-pandemic, thankfully. Awesome. Like, uh, yeah. These are just more classrooms, but there's this one area I just wanted to show you what like okay. I had mentioned earlier. So I don't know if you've been to funerals. Um, in our faith, funerals are pretty simple. We don't have a huge, you know, obviously if you want to spend, you can. Typically funerals cost less than $2,000. Uh, because it's supposed to be simple. Um, I don't know if you know, saw in the news a few years ago, the king of Saudi Arabia, King Fahad, who was, this was back 10, 15 years ago. I'm, I'm mentioning him because his event was more broadcast, yeah. uh, was more publicized uh, on BBC and CNN. He, he was the wealthiest, among the wealthiest men on the planet uh, when, because he was the king of you know, Saudi Arabia. When he passed away, he saw a, a very simple funeral for him, just clad in white cloth, they just did a prayer on him and then they went ahead and buried him. Uh, but basically that's how we're supposed to recommend to do all our funerals and so on. Mm -hmm. There's just one thing that happens that, uh, so when Muslims are born, uh, I mean, really everyone's born Muslim, particularly when you're born in a Muslim family, the father or someone calls the Azan in your red ear. Azan mm -hmm. is the call mm -hmm. to prayer. You'll hear it uh, every more time. That's basically the first thing you hear when you come to the world. When you pass away is when we do a prayer for you. Mm. Like the whole mosque or the community gets together. And, you know, there's a very short prayer, a uh, minute or two, uh, in congregation for you. Yeah. And then, you know, that after that, you they head off to the, the cemetery. Before that prayer, uh, if you notice, I, mean, I said that we took the ablution area where we wash up and then perform prayer, right? So for the, uh, the ones who have passed away, you know, we do a quick washing sort of ceremony for them as well. And that's the washing room uh, here. This is basically where the washing takes place. We put the body here and then we have a few volunteers who come in who are trained, who, who know what they're doing. We yeah. have a funeral director who oversees the whole thing. So uh, it's typically over, said over this that the water drains into, into the, uh, the toilet bowl there. Uh, it's not set up the right way, but basically, you know, the washing hand, you'll see on your, on the side there, you have towels, you have soaps, mm -hmm. you have uh, camphor, uh, and a few other things uh, for scent and so on. And this here is a freeze box as well. Okay. And outside you'll see the coffins over there. So that's basically the simple, as simple as can be. Mm -hmm. coffin. We don't have, I mean, if you want, you can get a mahogany and whatever you want to get, but you know, that's basically some of the origin of it. And that's mm -hmm. how short and simple life is, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the point is, I think if you go to any Muslim cemetery, for that matter, yeah. you won't see anything more than just a headstone with a name on it. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Uh, and if you go to Saudi Arabia, you won't even see a headstone there. Mm. It's like, you won't even realize it's uh, graveyard and so on uh even if you go to like the cemetery where all the kings and richest people are you won't even know who's who there and mm -hmm. that's how you came with nothing you go back with nothing uh, except yep. your good deeds and whatever good you have done that's see on the bright side with um video i can edit out any mistakes you made so like you know when i was editing i'm like oh you know gotta make him look really good so i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna really edit this up this is, this is my best buddy <laughs> You go back a long way. <laughs> oh, I'll edit this video too and make you look really good. Oh, yeah, right? Really yeah, smart. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can take a few people, uh, boxes of food to go as well. Who's <laughs> inside? There's activity going on.
when I, so, when I would bring it somewhere. This is a little, you can just, uh, yeah. You'll go all the way in for the shoes. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm just showing you this classroom. This classroom is a little different from your typical classroom. I mean, all the other classrooms have tables and chairs. You can take show that as I'll show that as well. But the, this is called if you walked in, it's called Tafiz classroom. So this is where, like I said, the kids want to memorize the Quran. That this is where they sit down together. You see the benches. This is like typical old style. So they'll sit down on the floor with the benches, the Quran on the benches, and then they memorize this. This is where your teacher will be sitting, and then he'll hear your recitation and correct you. Yeah. So this is yeah a, list, a different classroom setting, just for those who are memorizing, just for that lesson. Yep, and this is specifically for the uh, memorizing the Quran. The science classrooms look like a science lab, yeah. the English and math, yeah. like yeah. traditional. Back in the door. This is one of our. So this is a science lab, so it's locked because you know, Breaking Bad. <laughs> 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 Hopefully there's nothing going on like Breaking yeah, Bad no, in there. No, no, no. <laughs> you cut that out, right? You cut that out, right? I'm going to be in trouble by the end of this. <laughs> Let me show you one more classroom. Just so you know, it's a typical classroom and nothing else. Yeah, well, this is more like, more like it for you guys, right? It's oh, a, yeah. This one for smaller ones. Uh, but yeah, typically each grade we have 50 kids, so we have two sections uh, for each grade. Um, but yeah, okay. nothing special here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we'll head for the star. Awesome. Seven minutes to go. So uh, it's going to be in, in two parts. One is going to be dates. Yeah, yeah. And then and the dinner. actual dinner is going to be after. How, what time is it? 7.32. Five minutes? So this is just the part where we'll they, they'll break the fast with the simple dates and water, mm -hmm. and then you know we'll head up to prepare, and then we'll go back down to the gym there. Turn the rest. Of the actual dinner. We just ran out, but just some ways to start with dates. I think you've know mm -hmm. part of that part. Yep. I think I just using them, but uh, we'll hear more. There we go.
Allah.